August the 10th, 2020. Guys, you're looking at uh, computer models from about 30 minutes ago updated. And it's showing the system uh, that we've been watching in Atlantic for a couple of days. And I want to point out a couple of things about this model. Then we're going to look at uh, the uh, satellite imaging. The, as I've always said in the last few years, the Navy model and Canadian model have been the most accurate. And what you're seeing, the Navy model here, and you can tell by the colors here, purple right there, guys. It comes down and they're projecting it out to about right here and it stops where it says Navy GM. The purple line stops there. Then the Canadian model stops right here north of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Then again, they feed a little different data into each uh, model. And um, some, if the high-pressure system in the North Atlantic, it becomes weaker, like the TABM, the TABS models, it will show it turn up. But uh, I like to go with the averages right now, and so we'll, we'll see where this goes. I want to say this about being prepared. You guys in the Northeast kind of got uh, a Katrina. Now, it wasn't as strong, the Katrina... You know, it got up to a Cat 5 and then came ashore as a 3 and 4 as far as the uh, wind speeds. But it's still when your power's out and trees are down and the uh, power company's trying to fight to get you back online, it's all the same in the end. And uh, you had a lot of flooding and things like that. But now we've got over 10 weeks left in this year's hurricane season. You've got uh, the rest of August, you've got September and October up to the 1st of November. So be prepared with uh, water filtration, some backup food, and by all means, some backup power. Let's take a look at the uh, satellite imaging. Now, both the five-day and the two-day graph at this point, which this came in at 2 p.m. Eastern, you've got a 60% chance of development within five days or two days, either way you want to click on it. But it's saying a broad area of low pressure located almost 700 miles west southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands is not currently showing signs of additional organization with satellite derived wind data from the morning still showing the system having an elongated surface circulation however environmental conditions are expected to be somewhat conducive for development to occur and a tropical depression could form during the next couple of days while the disturbance moves generally westward to northwestward at 10 to 15 miles an hour Conditions are forecast to become less conducive for development by the end of this week. Same thing they said about um, Isaiah's guys was, and, and it, we saw it weaken, and then suddenly right before it got into the warmer waters of off Florida, uh, and then it suddenly exploded, and you saw it happen again from North Carolina up. So we're going to have to pay attention to this storm. Again, two-day forecast, five-day forecast is the same. 60% chance of cyclone formation. If, and if, again, if you go to, uh, let me just show you, today gives you the same reading here. 60% chance of development in 48 hours. Now, the, here's your wide Atlantic satellite imaging. The storm is located right here. The, not the first section, but the second one, you can see the rotation. It's elongated, but they're saying and for the next three or four days, Everything is going to be more conducive. Also notice that there's a clear area here. This is the sunlight, but back here is Saharan dust. So the storm's well out in front of it at this point. The only thing that could mess with it during the end of the week, like they said, you see this wind shear coming right off the uh, South American, excuse me, Central American coast right there. Depends on how that is focused and which direction it's blowing would be the only determining factor I can see now that would slow it down. But uh, the, again, we saw uh, Isaiah slow down, guys. And then uh, what happened after that? A lot of people, a couple million people lost power. Some people lost their lives. A lot of damage, trees down, homes damaged, boats, cars flooded. So you need to be prepared for this. Again, we're go as of really, it's uh, ten weeks and five days left in this hurricane season. On August the fifteenth, we'll have ten weeks. So you need to start being prepared. And guys, being from the uh, Mississippi area, we've learned to prepare for these hurricanes forty years ago. 
but uh, Katrina caught us all off guard, and the solar capabilities that we had then were nowhere near what we have now as far as what you can get. And I remember then you were looking at, um, for a small 5 or 10 watt panel, $100. Now you can get the 100 watt panels for $100, a dollar a watt. It makes a big difference. And uh, this, there's several ways to build the solar generator. What you're doing when you have a solar generator, it's just like your gas generator, except you don't have to try to find fuel, okay? You don't have to set it outside because of the fumes from your gas. Now, the AccuPower 400, they also make a 500. These are solar generators. You can plug them in to your home or to your car and charge it. But you can also, these two connections on this side, plug in, say, a 100-watt panel and get this thing charged back up very quickly. And what it does is simplify the solar system design. And what I'm saying about that, guys, when in this area you have a lithium-ion battery, which gives it long life, you can run a mini fridge, one of the 30 waters, for about 13 hours on this to get you over, through overnight. You can charge up your laptops. You can run a fan, a TV. The other critical component of this is that it has a pure sine wave inverter. So when you're building a home system or a camper system, a lot of times you're buying your battery separate, your pure sine wave inverter, which is a very clean way to power your TVs, cell phones and tablets because an inverted sine wave is kind of like dirty energy it's not clean but they they've got that in here so you, you also have one of the other things you put into a solar system whether it's in your home your camper that comes from the panels is a solar charge controller what that does is stop, stop the solar power coming in when your battery's fully charged if not you're going to fry your batteries even from a small system like this up to a larger system. Let's take a look at a couple things. Now here, if you click on and go to AccuPower and you take a look at this, the coupon code for 10% off. Now when you're buying this stuff, that's a lot of money. It's automatically built in. Just click here. The BP Earthwatch code is built in, but just in case you can type that in if it asks you for a discount or a coupon code. But I want to take a look at this because it is a small version of what you can do on a larger scale but click here and it's going to take you here now they've got some alternate financing it's 406.80 but you put our 10 percent in there you got 46 dollars and 80 cents so it puts it much closer to 350 again these lithium ion batteries guys are a couple hundred bucks plus your inverter pure sine wave notice you've got cigarette outlet plugs here you've got double us you got four usb charges here again multiple ways to pay this thing out plus your coupon code now what as we look at this it will you can come down it'll give you some different uh, things and we'll, what's cool about it in the kit at this price let me pull on this picture here's your cable to go to your solar panel and it's got the solar panel connectors already built in and over here on your red and black plugs in right here You've got uh, a thing to jump your car off in an emergency. You've got the wall charger. You've got a cigarette lighter charger here and an a, a, a external charger plug. So all the things you need plus a carry case. Now, what this thing is set up to do, and they suggest for convenience that you get a 100-watt folding panel. Now, the only thing about the folding panels, guys, is... You're looking at, you see, this is 120 watts at $306. Now, what I've done is I've went with a rigid panel. And if you're in a camper or something, just take the panel and set it on your couch or bed, maybe wrap it up in a blanket. Just, they're pretty durable. But you can get the same amount of power for about $100 with a rigid panel. And actually, they're more durable and uh, the ratings on them are better. So, this cost of having an external solar power supply, you need the panel, but you don't have to pay the 306. Again, it's got multiple outputs. Pull it down here, and you can take a look at some of the things. that You've got 300 watts of power, 400 uh, watt hours. You can uh, will take a full charge, support seven hours of running your laptop or tablet, 13 hours of a 30 to 60 watt mini fridge. Think about that. That will get you from sunset to sunrise. 
and then your panel is going to be back out in the sun. 15 hours in an electric fan, 18 hours with a 20 watt light. Get you the new LED lights. Don't use the old ones. They use uh, much less electricity. 19 times you can charge your iPad and Mini. 100 hours for a smartphone. 160 hours for an electric razor. Whatever. 15 at 30. Again, 15 hours on a fan. Comes with uh, again the shoulder mount carry bag, that, and the thing only weighs about 12.3 pounds, so it's not that heavy. But that's a basic way to get all the components for a small system into one package. And if you pull up and you look over at your solar panel section, again your fold down panel or fold out panel, which is for convenience, the hundred water, 300 bucks. But you can get the 100 watt poly, which is about a two by four foot panel, and I have 10 of these. I'm going to be running a thousand watts, or one kilowatt. For, but this is 114 bucks. Sometimes they're on sale for around 100. But it doesn't fold up. It's not as convenient, but it actually puts out more power. If you look at the ratings on them, and you could actually add 300 watts of power for the same $300 that you were putting into that foldable panel. Now, if you're on, if you're camping and you don't have and you're going to be backpacking the folding panel may be worth the extra money but if that's not the situation if you're camping or you're home or something go with the rigid panels and get full power for your dollar now if you click on the solution tab here at echo power it gives you a breakdown of some of the basic systems just you got your solar panels then the charge controller remember i was telling you don't let you it'll tell you it will tell the panels to stop charging the batteries so you don't fry your very expensive batteries. Then the inverter, which is uh, a pure wave sign inverter, like in the uh, small 400-watt uh, solar generator, that converts the DC back to AC electricity like comes out of your wall, and you can charge your things. It's very basic there. And then you can it just gives you a little bit more information, solar panels, how many you need, charge controllers, and it will be, depend, guys, on what you need it for. A couple panels, a couple good batteries in your camper will do it, or small cabin. If you're going to run a little bit more, you may want more, but you can actually take your light bill, one-month light bill, and look at the number of kilowatt hours you use, whatever it is, from 1.0 to 3.5 kilowatts. And there, you can go from there and uh, determine if you wanted to, power everything in your home what it would take but sometimes just being able to keep a fridge on and uh, with my inverter which is a 3000 watt inverter with a 9000 peak I can actually run a 5000 BTU air conditioner plus other things uh, you just it's limited on your big heat items like your 220 ovens 220 hot water heaters but there's ways around that there's solar water heaters We'll get into that, but uh, guys, if you got questions about it, uh, put it in the comment section, and uh, in the, I will see, and if I can find the calculator, I will put it in the link. If not, it will be in the next video to where you can look at your light bill, calculate um, how much solar energy it would take to run your entire home, and then if that's more than you want to do, think about the essential appliances, your lights, fan, air conditioning, fridge, right? Um, communications but uh, I just I said I was going to talk about this but that's just a very basic rundown now again when you go and click on the AccuPower uh, logo on our website guys it's going to give you the 10% discount and you can also sign up sign up under us and you'll get additional additional discounts plus if you have friends or family that are interested in solar power then you can introduce them to the site, put them through there, you get the credit for it, and uh, it will help you pay for your system. But we're watching it, guys. We'll keep an eye on the uh, update for the storm. It's a heads up. Be safe.